Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop, and we're going to do something a little different today. We'll uh, show you how to put a handle on a nice auto body hammer. So we got all these hammers. Uh, there was about uh, 10 different hammer heads that we got. They were, they were in a coffee can all rusted up, and Mark took some earlier footage showing the uh, de-rusting in the Rust 911. If you haven't used Rust 911, it's just a wonderful product cleans this stuff up like new really quickly and um, then Mark wire brushed them a little bit after just to clean them and they've been sitting around for a couple months and now I figured well it's time to uh, dress it up and put it back into service so that's what we did I've got a couple of them here we'll dress a bunch of them here we got three we'll show you what the potential of all three is but let's start with this one first and uh, all of these were, were really rusty and we put them in rust 911 and de-rusted them and then gave them a quick little wire brush this is a Fairmont which is a fairly good quality uh, hammer body hammer and this one's a Fairmont too and this one the handle was t just dirty as ever and uh, when we put it in the rust 911 it actually cleaned the handle up pretty nice too this has got a tight head on it so I don't have to do too much with that other than cleaning it up and this one here is more of a pick hammer but we're going to modify it and make it a little more useful it's got a loose head we'll see if we can tighten that head up but first let's take this Fairmont this is a really nice Fairmont too it's got the chisel end on it's very similar to my snap-on my favorite snap-on except it's got a lot more meat here and it's going to hit with a harder hit so I had the option of putting a little bit bigger handle like this on, but I, I'm, I'm going to opt for this handle here. I think that'll be fine because you're just kind of flicking this anyways. So the first order of business is fitting the handle to the head. And these are made pretty much universal, the handles are so they don't necessarily fit right off so you can see it's a little wider than the opening so we're gonna to have to grind this down and fit it in the best technique for grinding that in is to use this little foam pad and I've got uh, I think 60 grit abrasive here we'll put that on We'll grind this away and make that fit nice. It goes on this way here with the, this has more meat here and it goes right like that. And we have the little wedge we'll be putting in after we get it fit. So we can mark that with a magic marker. You can eyeball it, but it's a good idea to mark it if you have to. So I gotta take a little bit, a little bit off. That's about that deep. So I'm gonna come down to here. So we ground a little bit and then we check it. Nope, still too fat there, so we gotta go a little bit more. So look to see which side went the most. We're gonna leave a little taper in it. A little here. A little there. Then we check it again. Nope, still too fat. So it's trial and error. Now we're a little fat the other way too, so we're going to have to take a little... There's no substitute for these little foam pads too, they work so nice.
Well, it looks like the width is getting really close. The the uh, I mean the the thickness here, but the width here is off a little. It's starting to go in there. It's getting close. On this end, it's almost there. The other end still. Now it's starting to get on, and it'll leave a little mark, so you can. That indicates where you got to grind. So it looks like the width is good. There's this dimension here. Got to bite that off a little more. All right, so I think that'll do it. That'll, that'll come up flush now. That's got a nice little feel to it. I like that. All right, now <clears throat> what we want to do is dress this face a little bit. Um, when they make these, they forge them. There's cast hammer heads and there's uh, forged ones. The better ones are forged. And they, they use a, a little bit better quality steel. The cast ones, uh, cast can be very hard sometimes, but uh, generally they're not as, as good as a, a forged with, uh, with an alloy steel. So we're going to take and we'll go to this 50 grit here. This is the Norton Blaze 50 grit. And I'm going to kill the edge a little bit. The biggest problem with body hammers is unless you hit perfectly horizontal, which most people aren't going to do, they're going to be off a little bit like this or that. And you'll get these eyebrow uh, marks every time you hit. So you want to re relieve that. Grinding, proper grinding is a, is a very good skill set that you should, uh, you don't go at it uh, any old way. You, you got to be methodical about it, so. Now, if there's any big bites on the face of this, we grind them right out. This one here has, has some it's not as hard, so it, it got dented up a little bit. This one's not too bad. It's got a few little micro marks. So we took those out with the 50. <clears throat> then we're going to use the soft pad here. We'll go up to 80. And this has got the, uh, this is the Harbor Freight little grinder I like a lot. And use it a little adapt as we sell. We sell these foam pads now, too. And we can put a little crown on the, on the face here, too. You hit it? That nice ring? That means it's good quality steel. Then we'll get the chisel in.
If you do a lot of grinding, you don't want to get too hot, so we'll cool it off here. Yeah, now it's starting to look like something. <clears throat> These are the uh, flash marks from the from the forging operation. You can take those out if you want. I should probably pick a, put a glove on before I bite myself here. Let me get a glove. Now the the uh, disc has got tatted over here, so we'll get rid of that one. We can use that on the inside on a smaller disc. Later, uh, we want an 80. So we're still doing an 80. I'm just cleaning up these forge marks. Here. These foam pads just work so nice for this operation. We'll clean up that right here. That's the maker's mark, the Fairmont. We don't want to grind that off, so a little bit over here. Alright, so that's 80. That bit the wheel up to. Now we go <coughs> to 120. <coughs> this is 120. Now we'll go to 240. Looking nice. Now we go to 320. And now 400. Generally 400 brings it up to a pretty good shine. There we go. It's looking sweet. I've got some 600. Let me go get some 600. All right, here's the 600. Here we go. Full nutty. 1200. <laughs> We can buff it too, but I don't think I'm going to buff it. We'll just do the 1200. There we go. Polish nice. Now We'll mount it on the hammer here, on the handle. So. See how that little 
bottom out right there there's still a little taper there and we're just a little bit proud there's a lot of space in here and that's because this eyelet's a little bit bigger and we're gonna see if we can get this uh, wedge started here sometimes it's a good idea to uh, cut it with the bandsaw a little bit first you can throw some epoxy in here too try to hit the center and just take my time knocking that in and that'll spread it out into the bigger eye and it's that allows it to spread out into the bigger eye that keeps the handle on and then jump off keeps the head on That's tight, ain't going anywhere. Got a nice feel to it. I use these little tennis racket grips on a lot of my mallets and stuff. We start this up here. It's got a little self-adhesive to start it. And then you want to split this in half so the seam is right here. You'll see the seam. Just keep it tight. There you have a nice handle. We'll wash this with some lacquer thinner and then we'll paint this red up here. This is ready for Tiffany's window. Yeah, you can shellac or varnish that uh, handle if you want. Generally I don't. They'll, I should, but I don't. And then uh, we'll open up this red paint. All right, we've got some really thick enamel here. It's going to take a while to dry. We'll just get, we might have to do two coats too. That should be enough. All right. Probably have to do a second coat. Got one more little spot here. And then we'll have to clean up, uh, I went a little bit over the line in a few spots. But now that's a, a hammer that'll give you another 25 years of use. You have to clean them up every six months or so, they get a little marred. They're not super hard, sometimes they're only 40 Rockwell or so. And uh, I'll give it another coat and then polish this by hand a little bit and take off that little excess of paint that I got on the, the working surface but that's a nice beautiful hammer now so the other ones uh, keeping the, the video short here basically we're going to be doing the same deal we're going to be dressing these the same way and I'll probably paint that one too and this one I'd knock that off and make a much duller like a quarter of an inch Pointer. So let's see if this will tighten up. You use a little uh, pin punch here and we'll put that wedge in further and that might tighten right up. Right now it's got a rock to it. So we take the ball peen. Let's see if we can set this in some.
Yeah, it tightened it right up. So that's expanding that top, tightening it up nice. So uh, these will need a little dressing. We'll paint them just like we did that one. And uh, even really uh, common auto body hammers, inexpensive ones, can be cleaned up very nicely. So go out and, you know, we took about uh, 20, 30 minutes to clean that hammer up. And now that'll give us service for years and years and years. And that's, that's a beautiful piece. Please uh, subscribe, give us the likes, hit that notification bell, and give us the comments. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.